Okay, so <clears throat> today I, I would like to share about my life. I became monk age of <clears throat> 12. Uh, <clears throat> so just talk about a little bit how I became monk. <clears throat> So I was born <coughs> in Solokumbu called Pablo, so my family is quite poor. <coughs> my father, his job is carpenter, so my mother <coughs> looked after the children. <coughs> so my father used to go <coughs> to work as a carpenter up our <coughs> part of Solukumbu. <coughs> then I think he looked like he went to Laudo. Then he saw there <coughs> some little monk there. So then <coughs> my father was have some interest <coughs> to put one of the sons to the monks. So then, <clears throat> I think 1974, I think around maybe September, I'm not exactly sure, around October, September, like that, <clears throat> Lama Ishi and Mami Max <clears throat> came to my hometown there. This day, there's somebody's house. <clears throat> then nearby my house, so my father knew about that, so <clears throat> then, so my father want to put one son <clears throat> at the monastery. <clears throat> so then, first my father thought maybe bring my younger brother to become monk. <clears throat> so before that, he took shower early morning, wash, and wear the shoe dress, <coughs> dress up, then brought to Lamaishi place. But before reaching that place, so my father thought <coughs> better bring me two together in case even he don't accept both, but he will accept one, you know. So, <coughs> so then my father came back and <clears throat> and take me to Silamaishi. So that my mother told me that time I was washing my feet. <clears throat> so I was so excited <clears throat> to see Lamaishi. So I just complete washing one leg you know having no time to wash the another leg. <clears throat> so also I'm just wearing one shoe on the leg and one shoe carrying on the hand and <laughs> rushing to see Lama Ishi like that. So <clears throat> so then my father took two of us, me and the younger brother, to see Lama Ishi. So then <clears throat> so my then Lama Ishi look at my younger brother, then Lama Ishi thought he's not suitable <clears throat> to become monk. So then Lama Ishi decided, <clears throat> accepted me to become monk. So then at the end, Lama Ishi put his poor head or touched his poor head to my poor head. <clears throat> so then, <clears throat> but somehow Lama Shi didn't put his poor head to my younger brother, poor head. So something like that. <clears throat> so then, after we came back <clears throat> to home, then on the way, uh, 
I was teasing to my younger brother, <clears throat> you know, oh, you wash up, you dress up, you know. But see, the Lama didn't accept you. But I was not ready, you know, just not really ready. I didn't wash up, you know. But Lama accept me like that. I'm just <laughs> teasing to my brother like that. <clears throat> That what I don't remember that, but I think my mother told me about that. <laughs> so <clears throat> then, and I, I think around, I think around November, so or December, nineteen seventy four. So someone brought me to Kathmandu. <clears throat> So then, direct to monastery. <clears throat> then I think the Tibetan New Year, I remember. In Tibetan New Year, I was ordained by Lama Zubar Rinpoche. So with uh, two of my relatives, <clears throat> three of us become monk. 1974, into the New Year, the first day. <clears throat> so <clears throat> when I came first time in monastery, so there's I think 20 or 30 monks was here. So <clears throat> that time there's no room for monks to sleep, so everyone sleep in the tentage, big tentage, <clears throat> then we all sleep there. <clears throat> so then, <clears throat> very beginning, I, I miss my parents, so I did cry a few times. So after a while, I was quite happy in monastery. <clears throat> very beginning, so I have many different classes, <clears throat> such as drawing, learning English, then uh, Tibetan, then also poetry, so like that. <clears throat> so very beginning, we don't have Nepali class here <clears throat> in our time. So very beginning, so to learn uh, the Buddhist philosophy, so we, we don't have the text. <clears throat> so Lama Thundu write down all the question answer and who then somebody bring back that and write down on the blackboard. Then we all have to go there and copy from that. <clears throat> so then we have to memorize. So like that. <clears throat> Also, I remember, so sometimes Lama Zobar Rinpoche teach the, some philosophy class to us <clears throat> in the small tent, so only a few of us. <clears throat> so at that time, <clears throat> we don't really understand well. So most of us <clears throat> fall asleep <laughs> during the class. So then I remember that <clears throat> Rinpoche take out his mala, then touch on our head, we have a fall asleep. Then he recite one prayer <clears throat> in Tibetan. Kanyu kanyu chapo tangais, dundun sena ungrins. Pajasena T cells, Chilapjuna Telajuks. So he recite that <clears throat> and touch his mala on our head. So <clears throat> so that time I don't know what's the meaning of the word. But I remember that verse. That time I thought 
Dista Mala up Guru Rinpoche. Touching on your head is a blessing. I heard, I knew that much. I don't know exactly the meaning of the word. <clears throat> so only after a long period of time, <clears throat> after I graduate, then one time Rimji mentioned this verse in Singapore in the center. <clears throat> then only that time I truly understand what the meaning of the verse. So then, <clears throat> actually, actually, the meaning of the verse is when teacher is called you, think that is the wrathful mantra. If teacher beat you, that time you visualize that is the real initiation. If you do like that, in this way, <clears throat> all the obstacles are pacified. All the blessing you will receive. So that's the actual meaning of <clears throat> the verse. So very beginning, also the <clears throat> put a uh, quite very basic, uh, mainly the whole wheat bun with the dal. So sometimes we have dal and rice and vegetable. So then uh, dinner, we have this millet soup or millet porridge. So sometimes we have this oat porridge for the dinner. <clears throat> so that time, I think, <clears throat> whole wheat, millet, the porridge is cheaper than the other, such as white flour, white rice. <clears throat> So also Lama Ishi used to go to <clears throat> Western country, so he think that the best food for the monk to give the nutritious. <clears throat> so <clears throat> well, we are very, that time we are very healthy food, they serve. But <laughs> as a young monk who didn't like that much, the taste is not really not nice, <clears throat> you know. So, but from the Lama side, Lama Shi side, <clears throat> you know, they want to serve like nutritious food the monk. Could be that reason. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> very beginning. So, also we don't have proper toilet. So, what we have that time, you know, mostly we dig the hole. So then we. They put piece of wood stick, you know, around four corner, so they cover with the <clears throat> cloth like that. So <clears throat> also that time we don't have much water here, so we need to go down the hill to get the water. It's about ten. 10 minute walking distance down, down the hill, hill to get the water. <clears throat> the once a week, we go to the river, which is about 15, 20 minute walking distance from monastery. We go there, then a small river, we swim, we shower there, wash the clothes once a week. So, <clears throat> That time the river is quite clean. So nowadays the river is very polluted. Impossible to take shower from the river. <clears throat> so I was in 
Kapan Monastery from 1974 to 1980. I was studying in Kapan Monastery. So after four or five years, so then <coughs> my older brother who, who lived in Kathmandu. <coughs> so he think I'm not really studying in the monastery. <coughs> so he thought maybe come out from monastery and go to school. <coughs> he recommend that. He told me that also. <coughs> so then that time, so I asked Lama Hundu <coughs> what my brother told me. So then Lama Hundu advised me. <coughs> he told me better stay in monastery. If you go to school, what can you achieve? <coughs> Just a basic knowledge, not much than that. Also, then just creating so much negative karma in the life. So, even if you don't learn much, <coughs> you know, staying in monastery. So, in this way, every day you, are, you can collect merit all the time. <coughs> so, he said, better stay in monastery. So, <coughs> because of his advice. So I was able to stay in monastery. So I told my brother, I'm not going to join the school, I'll stay in monastery. <clears throat> so while uh, was, uh, I was studying in Kapan Monastery, so at that time many other teachers came from Sarah who teach us, such as Geshe Chamba Jatso, and Geshe Doga. So many these two teachers teach us <coughs> about this philosophy. So same time, <coughs> some of the students from Sarah, they come to pilgrimage in Kathmandu. So sometimes they come and stay in Kapan Monastery. Then <coughs> We have to debate with those monks who came from Sarah. So we have to debate with them. So we don't we are not good in debate that time, most of us. So it's very nervous for us to debate with them. That time I noticed whatever the question we asked to the monk who came from Sarah. So they, they can answer very well. So every question we ask, they're able to answer. <clears throat> so that time I feel that, oh, they are like so wonderful. You know, they know everything. You know, that's what I thought that time. They know everything, whatever you ask, they know everything. So, <clears throat> so that's how I was inspired by that, <clears throat> want to know everything about Buddhist philosophy. <clears throat> so then I think 1980, <clears throat> Lama Lama Shi, Lama Zopa, I think they discuss <clears throat> and best to send some monk to Sarah to study. Then Lama Ishi, Lama Thundu, so they asked me whether I like to go to Sarah. <clears throat> so I say yes, I decide. So then also same time they decide to send some other monk, three of other. So part of us, <coughs> they decide to send to Sarah. So then Lama Thundu took part of us to Sarah Monastery. 
1980. So we took bus from Kathmandu to border of India. Then from that, we took train. So the train is very crowded, a lot of people there. We have to squeeze, so there's no place to sit. So whatever we carry, our blanket, we just put down, we sit on the blanket there. So then it took about, I think, 40 hours to reach Sarah. So when I travel in the train, so always I try to look from the window. So how like two, three days, mostly you hardly see the mountains, only the flat land. So I feel a little sad not to, not seeing the mountain. Some kind of sad feeling there. <laughs> Then finally we reach Sarah. So that that's the, my first time taking train. Long hour. After we reach <coughs> in Sarah, then <coughs> that time His Holiness the Lama was there giving teaching. So then Lama Hindu stayed with us for about one month with us there. So then during that period, I went to receive teaching from my, one of my teacher, the philosophy class. <clears throat> Very beginning, I don't understand a single word what teacher is talking about. Then also when I go to debate class, when they debate, I don't understand anything what they're really debating about. After one month, <clears throat> I was a little discouraged <clears throat> because I don't understand when I go to debate class. So I feel a little discouraged there. <clears throat> so then I told Lama Thundup about that I don't understand anything. I want to go back to Kapang. <clears throat> so then he said, <clears throat> you are just here about one month. One month is too short, so must stay longer and try. <clears throat> so Lama Lundu, after that, Lama Lundu went back <clears throat> to Kapang. <clears throat> so, part of us live behind in Sarah Monastery. <clears throat> so, then months go, after three months, four months, still I was not really happy because I really don't understand much about Buddhist philosophy, you know, <clears throat> how to debate. And what, how, what teacher teach, also I don't understand. I don't know how to debate. So it's quite discouraging for me, very beginning. <clears throat> so then after four months, so I have some kind of thought arise in my mind. Better to go back to a monastery like that. But I don't have contact with my parents, my brother, so same time, also, I don't have money at all at that time. So I couldn't go back because there's no money for me to go back. <clears throat> so then I was there about one year, two years like that. After one year, so I was pretty happy for myself studying in Sarah Monastery because I understand a little bit what teacher teach so I can debate a little bit with the other so I see some improvement <clears throat> there for myself. 
So I see some result after one year. So then that makes me continue to my study. <clears throat> In deep down, also I do have this wish to study. So because of that, I try to study continually from there on. And Sarah, also very beginning, the food are very, very basic. They have rice, dal. When you eat the rice, also there's many sand inside the rice. You know, whenever you bite, mouthful, then you have this sand. You know, so difficult to bite the rice. <clears throat> so then also they give the dal, you know, a lot of rice, but only little dal cannot cover. You know, so quite difficult to eat. <clears throat> then also same time, we don't have money to cook. So sometimes we buy raw papaya, which is very cheap nearby. So buy the raw papaya, cut, make vegetable. Sometimes we buy cucumber and cut, fry with the <clears throat> onion, chili, like that. So we eat with that. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> also very beginning, also not all the time we have breakfast. Only sometimes we get breakfast when there's the pujas. If there's a sponsor, then you go to puja, you have a piece of bread and the tea. So, most of the time, so there's no sponsor. So that means there's no breakfast, there's no tea. <clears throat> so like that. <clears throat> so for myself, while I'm studying, I was sick in many different ways. <clears throat> so that time, there's many people get TV in Sarah. <clears throat> So one time I got myself the TV. So that time, so you have to take injection for three months. So <clears throat> there's one monk who was trained as a nurse. Then <clears throat> at at that time, so there's about 20 or 30 monks who have TB. So then we have to go to the small clinic nearby, so then they give the injection to us. So that time, the injection is shared by uh, everyone, almost everyone, they share same needle to inject. After a while, the needle become not sharp. So each time they give injection, so it's extremely painful. <clears throat> also the blood come out. So <clears throat> once a month or twice a month, we have to go to check up with the doctor. So that is very far away from the monastery. We need to walk about 45 minutes to the small town. From there, we need to take bus to two hours. And after that, we take another rickshaw, 30 to 40 minutes. Then we see doctor there. <clears throat> and same day, we need to come back. So like that. <clears throat> so it's been about one, about, about 12 months. So we did that. <clears throat> so when I was studying in Sarah, so that time we don't have money at all. So after I arrived in Sarah, after one year, I think, Rinpoche, Lama Rinpoche 
ask Mary Cloney to help me or support me. So <clears throat> then she support me. There's one French guy who lived in Sarah also, Mary Cloney. She lived the money with this French guy, one year money, you know. So the French guy will give me every month 50 rupees like that. So <clears throat> I think her idea is if give one time, I may spoil. So after a while, so she increased <clears throat> every month. She gave me, support me every month, about 100 rupees. So it's very, very helpful in that time <clears throat> when I really need it. So she helped me until I graduate, which is about 20 years. So I truly remember her support because she support me when I really need it. So I always appreciate her help. So because of her support, also I have deep interest to study. Because of that, I am able to complete my study. <clears throat> uh, 1984, uh, Lama, she passed away. <clears throat> then, 19, no, 1990, then reincarnation of Lama Ishi, the Lama herself, who came to Sarah to study. So, very beginning, 1990, so, uh, I was with Lama also helping there about seven, seven years. So then 1997, I was graduate. Then I went to Tanti College for one year. Well, I am in Tanti College for one year. Then, that time also, Lama Zawa Rinpoche was in Sera to attend His Holiness teaching. So, he, so Rinpoche called me and he told me he shows good to go. Japan immediately. So then, <clears throat> that time I couldn't go because I haven't completed my study in Tandi College. After I complete one year study in Tandi College, Then I came back to Kapon Monastery. Then I was teaching here for the young monk, the Buddhist philosophy, about I don't know, nine, ten months. So during that period, a member of Amitabha Buddhist Center, they request Rinpoche to send one teacher to teach there. <clears throat> so then Rinpoche decided to send me there. <clears throat> then some of the ESCO members of Amitabha Buddhist Center, they request me to go to Singapore. Then I accepted. <clears throat> In 1999, October, I went to Singapore. Very beginning, I thought just to try one year. Then somehow it become two year, three year, four year. Then after that, Rinpoche <clears throat> asked me to start basic program 
at the Amitabha Buddhist Centre. So <clears throat> when I start the basic program, then there's many people show big interest, especially those senior students. <clears throat> so all of them came to the class. <clears throat> Same time, I see <clears throat> people, people have so much interest to learn Buddhist philosophy. They have very busy life. From morning, they go to job until evening. So then they, they have quick dinner. Then they come to class from 7.30 to 9.30, we have class <clears throat> twice a week. So I see, <clears throat> when I see that, so that really encouraged me to teach more and share with them what I learned. <clears throat> so then I think it took about six to seven years to complete the basic program. So then, <clears throat> after that, because of people's interest, so I start second round of basic program. So there's many <clears throat> students came join for that. So because of that, <clears throat> so my stay in Singapore become very long, now it's about 21 years. Last year, Shimizu came to Singapore to celebrate <clears> the <throat> 30th anniversary of Amitabha Buddhist Center. So that time, he <clears throat> expressed <clears throat> that he was extremely happy about the center. <clears throat> so he said that his wishes fulfilled. So <clears throat> that time when Jumbuji expressed his happiness, it really touched my heart. You know, I'm able to do little contribution <clears throat> to fulfill Rinpoche's wishes. Uh, 2010, Lama Lhundu <clears throat> manifests sickness. So that time, so Rinpoche told me <clears throat> If something happened to Lama Sundu, then must look after the monastery. <clears throat> so then, I think middle of 2011, so Lama Sundu, the sickness get worse. So that time, <clears throat> I was teaching at Amitabha Buddhist Center. At the same time, Sorimuji <clears throat> asked me to be the abbot of Kopan Monastery. So then I thought it's very big responsibility <clears throat> to be abbot. Then I asked Rinpoche, so what is the best to do? So Rinpoche said, <clears throat> teach at Amitabha Buddhist Center eight months, then four months, look after the monastery. So <clears throat> I follow the advice. Now has been nine years, coming to 10 years. In conclusion, so I, I would like to share Kindness of the mother, 
how mother protect us from the danger. Uh, my mother told me after complete my study, she told me how she saved my life. <clears throat> when I was young, age of three, so that time my parents decided to go to India, both of them. So they decided me to live behind with my grandparent, which is three hours walking distance from my home. <clears throat> she sent me there before one week. I stay with my grandparent. <clears throat> so one night, my mother, she had a dream. I was crying and holding her leg, then request I request her in the dream, please don't go, like that. So <clears throat> next morning, she feel very uneasy, difficult feeling. May something happen to me if she go to India. Then next uh, morning, so she went to my grandparent place. So then she saw me there. <clears throat> then she said that time I told my mother somehow what happened, I don't know, but something happened. My mind become empty. Then I cried there, then same time mother also cry. Then my grandparents saw that, then told to my mother, we look after your son very well. Why both of you crying? So then somehow <clears throat> my mother thought better bring together to the home with her, then she decided not to go to India. So then my father was quite unhappy about her making that decision. Somehow father went to India, but mother stayed behind with me, looking after me. Then truly after day goes, then I get very sick. So like that, then <clears throat> if she didn't take care of me, if she left India, probably I will be dead, she said. When I heard that, so it really touched in my heart and tears come in my eye. If my mother didn't protect me, at that time. So there's no way I can study, no way I can graduate, no way I can teach. So also <clears throat> remembering kindness of the teacher who I am now is truly kindness of the teacher, gurus, who teach me, who guide me, who show me true path. I think best way to <clears throat> repay guru kindness is to follow guru's advice. <clears throat> much as possible and fulfilled Guru's wishes. 
this way so we make our life meaningful. Thank you for everyone. ดีล่ะสิงี่ก็สุดก็เสร็จแล้วนะตัวตัวที่ไม่ยังดีที่ไม่จุดยังท้าสิก็กว่าท้าที่จะเสียจุดยังดีนะที่จริงดีกว่า